something that blew my fucking mind because of how involved with with like my childhood this was mm. but there's a story that came out on oh, the daily man. beast about crazy how shit. an ex-cop rigged mcdonald's monopoly game and stole millions congrats everyone who ever won the mcdonald's monopoly game rigged almost it. every prize over the course of 12 years was a rigged ass thing because the guy who was responsible for like safely pieces. putting the prices the putting the the uh the the million dollar prizes yeah was super cor- corrupt and eventually got involved with fucking gangsters and straight up the Sopranos in real life. So, and it's like there's plot twists and turns every paragraph of this story I on the Daily break. Beast. Go fucking read it if you have any attachment or interest in this because I grew up in a in a fucking place where everyone I knew was playing this game, right? Everyone was hardcore into the fucking McDonald's Monopoly game. To the point where, um, even at church, because it's not gambling, it's a fucking it's a burger contest. Fuck off. Right? With that. It ain't gambling, so p- even people at church were in on it, and even that comes up in the story. My history teacher once told me about how a hospital randomly got a boardwalk piece mailed to them anonymously, and some good Samaritan just did it, and it was an amazing thing that happened that everyone was like, wow, that's so crazy. And that was a mystery in our lives for the longest time about how this unmarked envelope that just said Dallas wound up at a hospital, for uh, a children's research hospital. That works into this story. And little bits and pieces of things I'd heard over the years is all connected in what could be a trilogy. So the long and short of it, however, is you can't assign the final responsibility for items worth millions of dollars to to one person. Yeah, yeah. To one person. Because then they can just take them if they want. An ex-cop security guard became a mobster. Straight up. Well, he's working on some fucking print job and they hand him a little sticker and they're like, the sticker's worth 500 grand. The FBI eventually (laughs) launched something called Operation Final Answer. uh, uh, Which was basically a series of mixed stings on previous winners. Because this had been a fucking racket that had been going on for years. And everyone was in playing the game that I knew, and but no one ever... You can win a Sega Game Gear. Okay. So, <laughs> here's another thing. You that, know what, that, the, you know what one of the should do? They should just give out random hundreds of millions of dollars to anybody who ever played it. So, one thing I'll tell... Uh, like, like, of all the little bits and pieces, one of the ones, for example, I'll throw out that, that like, was relevant was... Um, uh, back okay so there's a part of the story where they described that this was not considered gambling uh, it was considered a contest because you didn't have to buy a burger to get a piece mm-hmm. you could just apply I didn't know that for free by writing to McDonald's and saying but you no wanted to play that. right that takes a lot of effort sure and time does. eventually later on and during uh, I forgot what year it was they made it so that you could just go to a website mm. and sign up with your email address and get a free piece so you uh-huh. participate so it's a free contest right it's yeah. not gambling mm. this is important because my brother back in the day figured out that you could sign up type in your email and then you go like, yeah, I want to play. And then you get your piece right away and see if you want a thing or not, right? Yeah. But as soon as you see the piece, you see it, the result, before it even sends the email out, right? Yeah. So there was a site that let you create large amounts of accounts for like a, a, a thing dot thing dot thing email address. Mm-hmm. And so it would be like, make a thing, send it out, see if you win. And then go make the address afterwards to catch the ball that's already in midair. Nice. Right? And he did that. That's not gambling, huh? And not he a did scam. And either. he and he did that. And like besides a couple trios, eventually a CD player was one. It's totally and that's, worth it. And that's the height of how Just far it got. Eating your trio or listening to your cool music on your CD player. That's how far it got. That's the fucking dream right? right there. And it was and, and because it's a contest that's free entry, it was mm. like like yeah, anyone can play for free as much as they want to. Uh, you know, and like you just the whole thing with going in and getting a piece with your fries or your burger or whatever was just like a gimmick that was the easiest way to get it, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and then they bring that up in the fucking thing to explain. This. So I'm like, this is so nuts how it weaves into a lot of my life. But it's also just an amazing story. Uh, that a is a movie out of it for sure. Yeah. The, making, the, making a murderer. 
Like, there's deaths. <laughs> there is deaths. There are deaths in the story. Does this open McDonald's up for a class action lawsuit? There already it are, there already was. Oh, yeah? And, there, and a lot of this shit happened and people pulled together. Dude, they fucking... The whole thing even kicks off because... Um, the guy who, who, uh, uh, Uncle Jerry, the, 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 the ringleader, the ringleader ex-cop that became a mobster watched when they seeded the results to like in a random thing to go, here's where all the million dollar prizes and all the pri right. like, high level prizes are going to go in the country or, or rather or, or across, the, um, all their stores. And they saw that the high, the fucking million dollar prize for the first one went to Canada and they officially, the McDonald's, the corporation that was working with McDonald's said, redo it. We don't want Canada getting that high prize. And he went, oh, what? And he's like, oh, you're just going to fuck over Canada? And they just, for, for the reasons that an American needs to be the first winner, they, they changed it again. And so when he saw that, he was like, oh, fuck this. I can just, I can just, I yeah. Just do whatever I want. And furthermore, if they ever say anything, I got this on them. And that oh, was what set it off. It, that's so it. that's why there were no fucking winners in Canada. <laughs> it's nuts, dude. And and like, yeah, there's there's fortune tellers involved. Fucking nice. And Yaba Rose. shows up. You know, like <laughs> it's so crazy how far the fucking rabbit hole goes. That's awful. Um, and and these are all just bullet points in this thing that keeps going. So yeah, man. Read this story. It is great. Why does great. McDonald's hate Canada? We're good to you. It has nothing... It because an American needs to be the first winner. Yeah. Always needs to be an American. It's the, the fucking... It's nuts, dude. Anyway. Uh, Does this mean if I go to Price is Right, like, is my dream? They'll all win the car, and they'll be like, no car for you, Canuck. I'd be sad. No, because those prizes are worthless to them. Yeah. But a million dollars is not worthless to them. A million dollars is not worthless to anybody. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. That's yeah. crazy. I, I like. I was thinking, none of this merely makes sense. Like, how could you? And it's like, yeah, I have this on you. Yeah, yeah. That's, and that's like, the linchpin. Of and one of the fun. best things is you can go back to the evidence. And some of them are like when they present the winners. All the winners in the filmed commercials that you saw over the years were all fucking scams in on the racket. Jerry and Columbo. one of the first ones, Jerry Colombo, <laughs> aka the leader of the Colombo crime family. Was basically literally I, Tony Soprano in real life. Columbo, Columbo fucking uh, figures out crimes. He doesn't do that. And he won a Dodge Viper, which what? he couldn't. But he couldn't sit in it because he was too fat. Because <laughs> he's a fat old gangster. So he just traded it in for the money. But he did agree to go on TV and shake a, ca a car key. So you see this picture of a fat ass Tony Soprano, literal mobster boss, winning. It's, it's, then you can go back and watch all the evidence, see all the criminals, and to get more of them, all they had to do was, guys, we're filming another commercial. Yeah. And they just got them all. Dude, it's amazing. It's, I love this story so much. All right. 